your only begotten son who gave his life for us. God, we're grateful. We're grateful that in him we have new life. We're grateful that in him we have forgiveness of sins. We are grateful in that in him, God, God, you cleared the record. And we are so grateful that in him we have eternal life. So God, flowing from our hearts, God, yeah, are the issues of life, and we are so very grateful. Now, God, we come right now asking, Lord, that you would just touch us one more time. God, open up our ears that we might hear. Open up our hearts, God, that your word might be deposited deep inside us. To the end, God, that we might be different. God, we're praying today to save a soul, to change a heart. We'll be so ever grateful. Yes, we, we thank you right now. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Give God a hand of praise. Amen. He is a faithful, faithful, faithful God. Amen. Amen. Again, praise God for your presence. I'm so excited. Amen. Miss Dorothy in the house, 95 years old, and her crew. Amen. Good to see all y'all in the house. Amen. And, uh, you know, she used to be in my Tuesday night Bible study class. And, you know, it's like she comes with a good team. Yeah. It's Miriam over there. Amen. Good to see you guys and praise God for your presence. And again, Amen. thank you guys for worshiping with us on today. Amen. Amen. So turn your Bibles with me to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2 as we continue our journey in Colossians. Colossians chapter 2. And if you can find Philippians, just go right. <laughs> Amen. You find Philippians, just go right. It's right there. Amen. Colossians chapter 2. And we're going to focus our attention uh, this morning on verses 8 uh, through 10. Amen. Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation this morning. And the word of God says this, don't let anyone lead you astray with empty philosophy and high sounding nonsense right, right. that come from human thinking and from the evil powers of this world and not from Christ. Yes. For in Christ, the fullness of God lives in a human body and you are complete through your union with Christ. He is the Lord over every ruler and authority in the universe, you are complete in Christ. President Walter G. Clippinger of the Otterburn College in Ohio enjoys this story of a fake blind man. This uh, pitiable creature with dark glasses and his little tin cup was standing on the street corner patiently waiting for someone to give him a small contribution. A kindly man passed by and generously dropped a dime in the poor old fella's cup. Then for some reason, he turned around and to his surprise, he saw the blind man's glasses pushed up on his forehead and his eager eyes closely examining the gift. I thought you were blind, said the disgruntled donor. Oh no, was the answer. I am only substituting for the regular blind man today. I'm not really blind at all. Well, where is the regular blind man, asked the other. Oh, he's gone to the movies. It's his afternoon off. <laughs> See, just as this fake blind man subbing for another fake blind man hustles the unsuspecting, there are false teachers that are trying to hustle the unsuspecting Christian and draw them away from the truth. See, this is the dilemma Paul continues to address in chapter 2 of his letters to the Colossians. Amen. See, there is the fake, the phony, trying to draw us away, trying to dupe us, as Jesus called the Pharisees blind guides leading the blind. Amen. See, in chapter 1, we learn that the preeminence of Christ, that Christ is supreme. He is central to his creation and his church. We also learn that we are reconciled in, God, in Christ. 
that it is in Christ that we are brought back into right relationship with the Father. But not only that, we will see today that we are complete in Christ. As we continue our sermon series, Christ the Sinner, we turn our focus of attention to the fact that we don't need anything else as believers but what we find in Christ. It's not in human traditions. It's not in philosophies. It's not in our own opinion. It's not in our own abilities and our accomplishments. It is only in Christ that we find everything that we need. That's right. So if you need a title for today, it is completely uh, complete in Christ. Amen. Christ the center, complete in Christ. And we want to know today, the principle that we want to learn today is that all that we are and all that we need is in Christ. Yes. See, all we need is in Jesus Christ who resides in us. We don't have to look anywhere else. See, when Paul was writing here to the Colossians church, he was dealing with false teachers that were telling uh, the, his, their listeners that Jesus was not sufficient. Amen. We looked at that. In chapter 1, where Paul just laid out the fact that Christ is preeminent. Christ is all in all. These false teachers were telling them that, listen, in order to really understand who Christ is, you need an additional experience. Amen. You need a super spiritual experience. They taught that Jesus himself was inadequate, and this inadequate Jesus couldn't provide all they needed for a full spiritual experience. Amen. Like today, many folks are seeking to, to find new ways to experience Jesus when all the ways we need to experience Jesus are found in him already. Yes. See, Paul countered this claim by telling the Colossian believers as well as us today that Jesus is the fullness of God and that because of our relationship with him, we are full too. Because Christ is complete in our union with him, he makes us complete. Amen? Amen. See, so listen, they have a treasure, and the treasure is Christ, who is in them. Paul tells them in Colossians that, it, that in this chapter, not to look for other treasure when the true treasure is already in you. See, many folks seek something super, something better when everything that you need is already in you. Amen. Man, I used to, uh, uh, a light show that talked about going to look for treasure. Mm -hmm. Amen, treasure hunters. And they thought when they found the treasure that it would change their lives. Many believers, uh, uh, instead of finding the treasure within, are looking for treasures outside of Christ. And God keeps telling them, Everything you need is already in you. Amen. We seek and we chase all these things that we think that will complete us. Amen. And the only thing that will complete us is Christ. I love that movie, uh, Jerry Maguire. Mm -hmm. Amen. I love it. I love it. And, and when Jerry and his girl entered that in the elevator and, and, and that famous line, uh, you complete me. See, many folks are looking for people to complete them. They're looking for a job to complete them. They're looking for their accomplishments to complete them. But all we have to do as believers is look to Christ because we are already completed in him. Amen? Amen. So let's get a little context of this chapter and verse that we're dealing with today. In Colossians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, it speaks of the fact that we are complete in Christ. Colossians 2 verses 1 through 3 says this, I want you to know how much I have agonized for you and for the church at Laodicea and for many other believers who have never met me personally. I want them to be encouraged and knit together by strong ties of love. I want them to have complete confidence that they understand God's mysterious plan, which is in Christ himself. In him lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. 
See, here Paul was simply letting the Colossians know that when it came to, to getting to, to talking to them, he agonized. It was something that was on his heart, and he was writing to them to encourage them, to unite them, and to teach them. He says, listen, I want you to be encouraged. I want you to have strong ties in love, and I want you to understand that all the mysteries, all the hidden treasure is in Christ. That's why I love the word of God. This word right here is a treasure trove, amen? If you want to hunt for buried treasure, open up your word, amen? Find the mysteries of Christ that are in there just for us. See, Paul wants us, wanted them to know just like he wants us to know that everything we need for wisdom and knowledge are found in Christ. Then in verse 4 and 5, he says this, I am telling you this so no one will deceive you with, with well-crafted arguments. For though I am far away from you, my heart is with you, and I rejoice that you are living as you should and that your faith is in Christ, and Christ is strong. See, Paul has a pastor's heart. And pastors are responsible for the spiritual health of those that are in their care so that they should always guard against false teachers. Amen. When he says here, the, the persuasive words used by these false teachers are similar to those words of a crafty car salesman. Now, I ain't trying to. I'm sorry, T. I know you used to sell them vehicles. But you do have the gift of gab. Amen. <laughs> The, those crafty car salesmen, amen, but before you know it, you walk out the door with, in their eyes with everything you needed, amen. You were just coming in for the basic, amen. You were just coming in, I just need a ride to get me from A to B, amen. Something can save me some money, amen, and, and, and you come out and you got the one with the full package. Your, your, your job is five minutes from your house, but you got the navigation, you got everything, amen. And see, that, that false teacher wants to tell you something that you need. Now, listen, listen, I know you have Jesus, but what you really need is to understand how we do. I know that Christ, you love Christ, but what you really need is this and that. Well-crafted arguments. Now, when it says well-crafted arguments, that means that it, they, they spend time, amen, they, they're strategic, amen. And listen, false teachers represent their daddy, the devil, who is crafty, amen, who is sly, slick, and wicked, amen. See, these are well-crafted arguments meant to get you to think that he's going to give you what you need. See, Paul is telling them that, listen, you got to be careful. Don't be deceived. Don't be Food. And the only way that we can make sure we're not fooled is by being in God's word. Amen. It is God's word that helps us. When we look at the fact that, that Paul is telling them this, he is taking on the pastor's heart. I got to watch over you. I got to make sure that you are well aware. Listen, I got two daughters. And uh, I made sure coming up that they understood uh, the ways of a Mac. I know y'all don't say that. Y'all don't talk about that no more, amen. I know the young people don't call them Max no more, amen. But, but I had to school them in the ways of a Mac because a Mac has well-crafted arguments. It is very persuasive with his, with his words. He comes with a plan, amen. And, and that plan is that, oh, he, he said he loved me. No, he don't. He, he said he's going to take care of me. No, he won't. I'm your daddy. I'll take care of you. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and so I had to school them that, that they got the words to say. But those words ring hollow. And see, the false teacher has crafted these arguments to get your ears to itching, to, to get your heart to flutter. But what they offer is fake, false, and phony. It's empty at the end. Because if anybody, uh, ladies, if you ever dated a Mac, you know they really didn't have much to offer. Amen. They were looking for something instead of to give something. Amen. Amen. So don't fall for the conspiracy of the Mac. That's the false teacher. Then Colossians 6 and 7, verses 6 and 7, he says this. And now just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. 
Let your roots grow down, down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Uh, you will be grateful, grateful and grateful. See, here the Apostle Paul is reminding the Colossians that they accepted Christ as their Savior, so they must not deny him now. Amen. By listening to the false teachers, rather they must keep trusting and live by faith every day. Do you know when you get saved, it is the enemy's, one of his main objectives is to get you off course. One of his main objectives is to draw you away from him. See, this is what happened also in, the, in Galatians. When Paul wrote them, he said, listen, what happened to y'all? How quickly you have fallen away from the very thing that I, we just taught you. We, you just accepted Christ. You were growing in Christ. And you let these, let these folk come in here and draw you away. He said, listen, you said you saved. You said you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. You need to stay the course. Amen. Right, right. Uh, we were just talking earlier about how, you know, when, when college students, when they get to school, amen, they often change their major. Right. Amen. They, they often think that, hey, I, you know, I want to do this. I want to do that. Amen. And, and then when they get to school, like, oh, no, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm going to change up the game. Amen. Right. Listen, when you came to Christ, you major in Christ. Right. Amen. There is no other major. You major in Christ. And, and when you come to him, you can't all of a sudden change your major. You, you can't say, well, Jesus, uh, I said I'm in your course. I'm going to follow you, but I don't like what you're teaching. I don't like where you're taking my life. I don't like this. This is tough. Jesus says, listen, you major in me. You got to stay the course. Amen. You got to complete it. You got to continue to walk in it. Amen. So this brings us to our focus text. Verses 8 through 10 tells us, don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies, high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. See, we're complete in Christ. All that we are are in him and all that we need are in him is in him. All we need is in Christ. When we look at verse 8, Paul is, is deeply concerned about the false teachers and therefore calls us to vigilance. Vigilance means that we, we have a, a, a burning desire. We are hypersensitive to all those things that are around us. Amen. They are, uh, danger, uh, they are in danger of being deceived by human wisdom that is based on an unbiblical worldview. Yeah. I used to uh, tell my Sunday school class that we must have a Christian worldview. Amen. And what that means is that you see the world through the eyeglasses of the word. Amen. So when all these issues come up in life, you're not coming with your own opinions, your, your own thoughts about it, amen. You take the word of God and you look at it through the word of God, amen. Man will try to get you to look at the world from their point of view. Let me tell you this. The Bible says that this world is passing away. But yet we have man looking for the answers in the world, looking for the answers in politicians. Amen. Amen. Now, listen, I ain't seen a circus like this in a political movement in a long time. Right. Amen. Sometimes when the folks stand up, I like just cue the music, get some tents out. Right. Amen. <laughs> Bring out the clowns. Amen. Uh, but it, it, you cannot find your hope in people. Amen. We understand that there's a political system. Amen. We thank God for government. Romans teach us, teaches us in Romans chapter 13 that we got to respect authority and, and that God is still in control even in that. Amen. Amen. But listen, if you are looking for uh, hope and change and all whatever slogans come in, man, you're in trouble. Your hope and change is in Christ. 
Amen. Listen, the church has survived every kind of political system you could ever think of. The church was born at a time when it was persecuted, when, when, when uh, Jews were under Roman authority. They were born when, when persecution was happening. And I ain't talking about you can't read your Bible at work. I'm talking about if you name the name of Christ, we'll put you up on some stakes and burn you. We'll crucify you on the side of roads. We'll feed you to dogs and lions. Amen. 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 So we can't look for our hope in men, in human thinking, in human philosophies. We find it in God alone. Amen. See, when Paul says beware, it alerts them to the seriousness of their situation and their need to be attentive to the possibility of being misled by a false pursuit of wisdom and knowledge. Amen. Have you ever met some of them super spiritual people? Yeah. I mean, they in church, they, they got the special wisdom, amen? Right. You know, when they, they, they look at you like, you ain't never opened the Bible before. They're, they're super, wait a minute, they, they want to tell you about, if you really want to understand this scripture, you must do it this way. See, this is an issue that Paul consistently dealt with all throughout the New Testament, amen? Because right. those false teachers kept teaching that, yeah, Jesus, that's good, that's wonderful, but we got a little more for you, amen? amen. We got a little something extra for you. I, I call it the, the Salvation Plus program. They, they, they've been pushing the Salvation Plus program. You know, today, you say, but let me see, how, how long your skirt, lady? Uh, you say, but but did I see you with a, 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 a glass of wine? You, you say, but it, are you doing, you got to do A, B, and C to be really saved. You know, some folk will have us all walking in white with halos, amen, and, and harp music only playing. Oh, you can't have no drums in church. You know, that's not what saved people do. You know, you can't have no keyboards. Amen. Amen. All these things they want to, uh, and brothers, you know you can't play no dominoes. Christian men don't do that. That's from the devil. <laughs> All these things that are men's traditions and men's thoughts and men's opinions, we need to be attentive to what God says and not be led astray. See, the heresy that was being peddled by false teachers included philosophy and traditions of men, science of the day, and worldly thinking. Paul is warning them about this kind of teaching that does nothing for the soul and negates the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is not according to Christ. See, in the Colossian church, they had folks that were, again, trying to undermine the deity of Christ, the sufficiency of Christ. You had those individuals that were teaching the fact that Jesus could not come, could not have been fully man and fully God because anything material was evil. You had those inside the Colossian church that were teaching that, that yeah, you say, but you still have to apply some of the Mosaic laws to your life. Amen. They were teaching, yeah, you're saved, but... What do you see in the stars? Right. Right. See, I know many of us, and, and, I, and I was going to hope to get into this next week, but when I will. Many of us, you know, you know what's your sign is? <laughs> Cancer. And my name is Larry. <laughs> Amen. We, 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 we look at these things, but this is not new. They were finding themselves in the stars. Listen, the reason I cussed you out it's because of my sign. You know, we don't do this. I got, come on now. Yeah, yeah, come on. See, see that? That's what Paul was railing against. He says, you knew in Christ. I don't care what your sign is. Right. Right. You knew in Christ because God has born you, amen? You don't need to find who you are in the stars and in the calendars, amen? Who you are is in Christ. See, we can't let these world philosophies, traditions of men, amen, this political correctness drive us. It is the word of God that stands. And Paul was reminding them, be careful. Anything like that will negate what Christ has come. Christ has come to make you free, but you've allowed a men's philosophies and traditions to lock you up. That's right. Now, I'm going to share this. I'm going to be careful. Ms. Brenda, just excuse me. Uh, I'm an usher. I was an usher at heart. Right. My brother was an usher. You know, we... My boys are ushers, amen. And, and, and I used to tell folk I didn't want to be no usher because, you know, I, I just, from Zion Baptist Evangelistic Temple in Compton, the ushers had those flammable polyester suits with the, you know, the little deals on them, amen. I don't, I don't want to be no usher. But I know some folk today will fight you over the usher ministry. 
they, 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 will, they will have elevated the usher ministry to it's, it's in here with deacons and preachers. It's part of the fivefold. But you didn't see that in there. It's ushers in there. They'll fight you over that because they elevated a tradition, amen, above what the word of God says. See, we got to be careful that our pet little things that we like to do, amen, although there's nothing wrong with that, that is a tradition, we got to look at what the Bible says. And when anything starts to elevate above what the word of God says, we got to be careful. You know, your, your committee can become your idol. All we need is in Christ. Verse 9 says, for in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So you are also complete through your union with Christ, verse 10 tells us, who is the head of every ruler and authority. See, the aim of the false teacher's philosophy is to weaken trust in the Son of God. That, that, that is their aim. See, Paul signs a warning call to vigilance again. But what is the real truth? This is it. In him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him. This verse is one of the most important verses in the Bible because it dispels that Jesus Christ is nothing, is anything else but God. Amen. Again, in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Amen. This is what the false teachers were opposing and denying. Paul once again points to the greatness of Jesus Christ and tells them again that Jesus Christ is God in human flesh. The incarnation is real. Listen to Jesus' words in John 14 verses 7 through 11. He says this. If you know me, you will also know my father. From now on, you do not know him. You do know him and have seen him. Lord said, Philip, show us the father. And that's enough for us. See, Philip was from Missouri, Jay, the show me state. <laughs> Jesus said this to him. Have I been among you all this time without your knowing me, Philip? The one who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in and that the Father is in me? The words I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who lives in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Right. See, Jesus was letting them know, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. All that the Father is, is in me. And all that I am is in the Father. Me and the Father are one. Yeah. See, thus all that God is in his divine essence, Christ is also. So Paul was emphasizing here that the fullness of the divine essence dwells in Jesus. There must be no doubt about who Jesus Christ is. Christ is God, fully God, not a demigod, not a, a, a lesser God. He is God and everything that he is and everything that the Father is and everything that the Spirit is, they share everything. He is God. See, once you undermine who Christ is, you undermine his message. Once you undermine who Christ is, you undermine his sacrifice. Listen, Jesus did not claim to be anything else but God. I, I, I love one writer talks about the fact that either Jesus is the greatest liar to ever walk the face of the earth, the greatest lunatic to ever walk the face of the earth, or he is exactly who he says he is. He is God and God alone. Amen? So, so what has all this talk about the fullness to do with the Colossian believers? Does it have some effect, some power, some meaning? Yet, listen, it results in believers believing and understanding that we are complete in him when Christ is in you there's no room for another one on the throne but him 
See, see, many of us, if we went to the throne room of your heart, the throne room of your life, we see you sitting up there with your scepter. Because you running your own life. But listen, Jesus ain't going to share no throne. Amen. Either he's on the throne of your life and he, or he's not. And when you understand that you are complete in him, he is the one who rules and, and reigns in your life. Listen, the Colossians needed to grasp three things. When we look at these verses, we need to understand that as believers, we are complete at conversion. It is not by works, not by faith alone that sinners are saved. It is by grace. grace. Listen, you are complete at salvation. When, when Christ came to you and you converted, you gave your life to Christ, he made you whole then. If you got some time after you finish eating your donuts and coffee on uh, uh, this morning in Sunday school, we'll be dealing with the fact about sanctification, amen? And we learned that in sanctification it takes two places. You, when you are saved, God has made you holy. He has made you righteous. He has given you a place in heaven. And now we got to learn just to walk it out. Right. Now we have to learn how to live it out, amen? You are complete at conversion. You have everything you need for righteousness and right living. Listen, as believers, we are complete only in Christ. Spirituality has a location, and it is in Christ. You're not complete in anything other than in Christ. And all believers are complete. I love the Bible. There is, there is when you come to Christ, there is no caste system. There is no VIP. Amen. Uh, uh, some, some churches may have VIP. Come on, come on now. Amen. But but when you get to heaven, there's no VIP. You're going to see folks who was broken than you. Amen. You're going to see people who are more broken than you. All people come at the same level when we come to Christ. Everybody comes to Jesus the same way. Rich, pauper, broken, healed, whatever it is, we all come to Christ the same way. And when you get saved, we're all complete. I'm complete. Taylor, you complete. You're complete. Devin, Dennis, you're complete. We're all complete. And we are all come the same way in Christ. There is no caste system in Christ. The word of God warns us about being uh, uh, playing favorites. Amen. God tells us that we all have to come the same way. God completed believers through the ministry of the Holy Spirit who applied the positional benefits of Christ's redemptive work to all of us. Amen. Listen, Paul challenges the Colossians to believe that they are complete in Christ and to reject anything less than this. For Christ is the head of all principality and power. See, two of the four classes of angels are given here, these uh, principalities and powers. Amen? Amen. See, see, these celestial beings represented fallen spirits that needed to be disarmed. See, the false teachers asserted that God's rule over the church was by angels. See, the cross, however, has brought victory and the end to their power. See, when Satan fell, he fell with a team. See, many people uh, 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 forget that the Bible says and tells us that Satan was beautiful. He was, he was an angel, amen, and he has fallen. So those, listen, the, the, when we talk about this and we looked at it in Ephesians where it talks about our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, the powers, those spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly realm, amen. You got a battle. Your battle is not against your brother or your sister. It's those principalities and rulers. But understand this, it's saying that Jesus defeated them. Amen. Jesus defeated them. And because Jesus has defeated them, he has given us victory. See, just like the Colossians church was complete in Christ, we are complete because of Christ. As I push to a close, I just want to share four things that show us why we are complete. See, see, Paul wants us to know it's, it's one thing to know that you are complete. But what does that mean? Amen. Well, what does that mean? And many times in church, we, we say all these things. We got all the nice Christian sayings and, and, you know, I'm blessed and highly favored. All these things. I'm washed in the blood. We got all these sayings. What, what, what that mean? Amen. <laughs> what, what, what are you? You encountered a serial killer? He poured blood on you? What, what does that mean? I'm washed in the blood. Well, all these things. So what does it mean to be complete in Christ? Well, he tells us right in the scripture. 
There's four things. The first thing we learn here in the scripture is that the circumcision of our hearts is in Christ. Don't let that, 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 that word mess with you. Verse 11 tells us this. When you came to Christ, you were circumcised, but not by a physical procedure. Christ performed a spiritual circumcision, the cutting away of your sinful nature. Listen, in, in the Old Testament, circumcision happened to the males on the eighth day of, of the Jews. Jews. Jewish males on the eighth day were circumcised. That was to mark them out physically as, re, uh, as belonging to God. See, the Jews took that mark and elevated it to a status where they would begin to brag about the fact that we are of the circumcised. So any Gentile, amen, was looked down upon because you're not the circumcised. Well, what happened with Jesus is he is the great equalizer. Right. So when he came, amen, he told them, and we learned this also in Romans, is that, that listen, it's not about the physical circumcision. Right. Because I've come to circumcise your, your heart, amen? And when he circumcises your heart, that marks you out as belonging to him, amen? amen. See, the false teachers wanted to elevate the physical, but God was telling them, listen, I have marked them out. When we talk about this, circumcision of, of the heart is essential to the believer, amen? Um, many folk, uh, we spent like three years studying Revelation. And many people get, get nervous. Four years, I'm sorry. People get nervous. I'm going to get the mark of the beast. And how do I know this? And how do I know that? Listen, if you're circumcising the heart, you already marked out. That's right. Amen. You don't have to worry. You want to learn. You want to grow. But you don't have to worry. See, because the people are like, oh, man, how you know if you got the mark? Well, I got the mark of Jesus because he circumcised my heart. Well, how do you know if you if you going with him when he comes? Because when I got saved, he marked me out and it belongs to him. Well, I don't see no mark. You ain't got to as long as he does. Right, right. <laughs> amen. As long as he does. Amen. Listen, the false teacher said that converts must be circumcised as it was essential to their salvation. But Paul taught that believers need to be circumcised in the heart, amen, because we are complete in Christ. Yeah. As he fulfilled all the Old Testament types and shadows, making Judaism obsolete, the circumcision Paul speaks of is spiritual, amen. It represented a regeneration for us in effect. People of God, we are changed from the inside out. We have a circumcision not made with hands, amen. He listen, he strips away the power of the fallen sinful nature and has promised and promised us with God that, that God would guide us and direct us. Listen, it is through circumcision that the circumcision of the heart that God cut away our sinful nature and gave us a new life in him. So listen, we know that we are complete in Christ because he has circumcised our heart. He has given us a new heart, a new life in Christ. Not only that, we, we know that we are complete in Christ because our baptism is into a new life in Christ. Verse 12 says this, For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with him you were raised to new life because you trusted in the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. Now listen, buried with him in baptism. Baptism is one of the two major ordinances of the church. Y'all yeah, get that, uh, deacons in training? Amen. Two major ordinances of the church, the Lord's Supper and baptism. Amen. And these things are expected. Baptism is expected to follow conversion as soon as possible. Listen, we are baptized out of obedience to God. Amen. It is an outward expression of the grace that, that God has given us at salvation. Amen. We do it. It is an illustration of our resurrected life with Christ. We go down, amen, the old man, but come up the new man. Listen, Paul's not talking about the water right now, amen. He is talking about the fact that our old life was buried in Christ. When, we, when Christ died and we gave our lives to Christ, our old life died in him, amen. But, but this is a problem. This is for free. Some of us are starting to resurrect the old life, amen. The, the old life we use is... Talks about, remember how we used to be? Remember how, my, how we used to hang? No, no, you are buried. That old life is buried, and you are brought up new. All of us are new 
in Christ, those who accepted him as Lord and Savior. See, again, baptism is an outward sign. When someone dies, the next step is burial. And similarly, baptism is the next step, an essential step for converts. The New Testament knows nothing about Christianity without baptism. Wow. Listen, just as it knows nothing about Christianity without circumcision of the heart. See, we, we know that we are complete in Christ because we've been buried in him and brought to a new life in him. It is in Christ, in Christ alone. There is no one else that can resurrect your life but Christ. Amen? Not only that, we know we are complete in Christ because our reconciliation is in Christ. Amen? We are reconciled. And verse 13 says this, you were dead because of your sins. And because of your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ For he forgave all our sins. See, having having forgiven you of all trespasses, he tells us, without Christ's death and the work of regeneration, the hearts of men and women are spiritually dead in their trespasses. I I, I love my my boy, Reverend Patrick Christian, preaches this sermon, and and I think I've referenced it before. He says, when, when you are looking at somebody that it does not have a relationship with Christ, you see dead people. Amen. They may have physical breath in their body. Amen. They may look alive, but without Christ, we are already spiritually dead. The only way to be made alive is to come into a relationship with Christ. Amen. He is the one who regenerates us. The cross is God's solution to man's alienation and depravity. We talked about this. Amen. At Calvary, Jesus Christ purchased forgiveness with his blood. For all trespasses and sins, now through him there are is found reconciliation that brings peace with God. It was at Calvary's cross that Jesus brought us back into right relationship with him. See, our, our sins, our, 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 the fact that we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity, we were separated from God. And it was through Christ that he reconciled us back to God. Remember, we talked about the fact that there was no peace between us and God. Right. But it was in Christ that we have now reestablished our peace with the Father. Yes, See, we find reconciliation in Christ. We're complete with him because we are reconciled in Christ. Yes. Not only that, our righteousness. We are complete because our righteousness is in Christ. Verse 14 says this. He canceled. Oh, man. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. I don't know about you, but I sure would welcome that all my debts be canceled. I sure would welcome uh, that that all my debts would be marked, paid in full. Amen. Listen, when we look at this, this fourth reason is why believers are complete in Christ is because Christ's righteousness is imputed to them. The righteousness of Christ is their covering. I love this word, and, and we've been studying this word in our Tuesday night Bible study class, and it's in the Bible, imputed. It's in the Bible. It means that, that, that Christ's righteousness has been deposited to our accounts. Listen, we came to Christ bankrupt. Amen. We already came owing a sin debt. Amen. But it was Christ's holiness, his righteousness was credited to our account. It's like going home, opening up your, 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 your bank app and looking in your account. You know that you only had some pennies in there. Amen. But, but you, you got so much money you can't even count. See, the Christ came in, and when he died on the cross, he gave you his righteousness. Now, understand this, and I'm going to share this again. It's his righteousness. See, because as long as we in this flesh, we, we can't muster up no righteousness on our own. We have his righteousness deposited to our account. Uh, uh, listen, if you ever got uh, uh, some money from from, you know, your parents or whatever, and sometimes they, they borrow, you borrow cash, and they say, I'm going to put some money in your account. 
baby, but recognize I'm putting some money in your account, but that, that's still my money. You owe me. Right, 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 right. Amen. Listen, I, I'm going to be transparent. I remember when uh, uh, I bought, uh, we bought our house in, in Eastvale. And so, you know, I, my other house was, was in, in escrow and we were getting ready to buy and, and you know, the market was hot. And the uh, and, and, uh, seller was like, listen, dude, I, I need a $5,000 deposit. I'm like, $5,000 deposit? Yeah, I need it. Like, if you want it, I got a list of people who want to buy it. I ain't, I ain't giving nothing up. 5000 deposit. You remember them good old days when we had money. Yeah. Amen? <laughs> and, and so I know he's going to get mad about this, but I'm going to share this, a point to this. Deacon McCoy wrote me a check for five grand. And he reminded me, that's my money. <laughs> I need it. I need it back. You, you can park that in your account. But remember, that's my money. At no time was it ever my money. <laughs> Amen. And listen, when we come to Christ, Christ deposits that money into our account. He gives us his righteousness so that we'll have everything we need to close escrow. It is his righteousness, amen? Listen, verses 14 and 15, we have Christ's work on the cross described in a technical detail. It is not simply the message that God loves you and Christ died for you, amen, but it's a deeper relationship, a deeper revelation. He keep, listen, these verses give us a behind-the-scenes look at the process Christ undertook to save us. Listen, when we look at this, this debt that we owe, amen, it is like a requirement. It is like a certificate of debt, an invoice or a document telling us we owe something to God. See, the law condemned us for our failure. But when Jesus died, took the certificate with him so that he could write across it with his own blood, canceled, debt paid, amen, it is by his death on the cross that our sin debt is paid in full, period. He canceled the debt. See, this is the serious part. It is scary to think that if you don't have a relationship with Christ, you're still on the books. If you don't have a relationship with Christ, you got to pay that debt on your own. Amen. And, and listen, that payment has to be made. God is a righteous God, a just God, amen. And sin demands that payment be paid, amen. And, and without Christ, you own your own. Amen. You ain't no villain to go to. You got to come. You, you own your own, amen. The Bible tells us that he nailed our debts to the cross. The legal case against us is done with, amen. The creditor can't pursue us because God has nailed it to the cross in his son, Jesus. Verse 15 says, with that, he disarmed the principalities and powers. See, Satan and his forces were de dealt a powerful blow of defeat on Calvary. See, see, they thought, we talked about this on, on Easter. When, when it was Friday, they thought they had won. They, they see him on the cross, but they don't understand. That was his, his entry into victory. It says that he, he took victory and he made a public spectacle of them. Listen, when Roman, Romans would come and they would conquer a, a, a city or, or conquer a people, their conquering general, generals would take their captives and they would give the general a parade. And he would walk through the city with those captives, letting them know that we have victory. Amen? Listen, when, when Jesus took the cross, he took the enemies and publicly showed that they were defeated. Amen. Amen. So when we talk about and we come against the enemy, we got to remember he is a defeated foe. He has made a public spectacle of them. Amen. And when we are as his believers, because we are complete in him, we have to understand we have victory in him. When we look at this, we have to understand that we are complete in Christ. All that we are. All that we need is in Christ. We have all we need in Christ because he's marked us out as he is. He circumcised our hearts. Well, listen, we have all we need because we've been baptized into a new life. Amen. It's wonderful to be able to say that old life is behind me. 
Amen. Don't, listen, don't, don't, don't get caught up in what I used to be. I'm new in Christ. Amen. And, and, and then not only that, we've been reconciled with him. He's restored our broken relationship with Christ. And listen, he has nailed our sins to the cross, making and giving us a right, right standing with God. All we need is in Christ. So listen, this week, as you reflect on what God has done, that you are complete in Christ, don't ever let anyone tell you that Christ has not given you everything you need. Don't let anyone tell you that you are inadequate in Christ. Christ has given you everything you need. The problem is some of us, we don't understand that. We don't walk in that. We don't live it. You want to understand everything that God has for you? Get in his word. Amen. He, he'll let you know everything he has for you is in his word. Yes, so listen, we need to reflect on a regular basis the essential truths that we keep Jesus central in our lives. He has to be the center. Jesus is fully God. Nothing needs to be added to him. You have everything you need in Christ already. You have the fullness of him. Nothing needs, needs to be added to you. There's nothing man can offer you that can make you better in Jesus. God has everything that you need. Amen. Understand that you are complete in Christ. Yes, if Christ is the center of your life, if you've accepted him as Lord and Savior, you are complete in him. Mm. Now we have to walk out the fact that we are complete. Amen? Amen. Amen. Give God a hand of praise. <laughs> He's a faithful, faithful God. Amen. As we pray today, I just want you to be reminded that you are complete in Christ. We've been seeking to be made complete in all these other things. But we have to understand that everything, and that the Father is in me. The words I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who lives in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Right. See, Jesus was letting them know, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. All that the Father is, is in me. And all that I am is in the Father. Me and the Father are one. Yeah. See, thus all that God is in his divine essence, Christ is also. So Paul was emphasizing here that the fullness of the divine essence dwells in Jesus. There must be no doubt about who Jesus Christ is. Christ is God, fully God, not a demigod, not a, a, a lesser God. He is God and everything that he is and everything that the father is and everything that the spirit is, they share everything. He is God. See, once you undermine who Christ is, you undermine his message. Once you undermine who Christ is, you undermine his sacrifice. Listen, Jesus did not claim to be anything else but God. I, I, I love one writer talks about the fact that either Jesus is the greatest liar that ever walked the face of the earth, the greatest lunatic that ever walked the face of the earth, or he is exactly who he says he is. He is God and God alone. Amen? So, so what has all this talk about the fullness to do with the Colossian believers? Does it have some effect, some power, some meaning? Yet, listen, it results in believers believing and understanding that we are complete in him. When Christ is in you, there's no room for another one on the throne but him. Right. See, see, many of us, if we went to the throne room of your heart, the throne room of your life, we see you sitting up there with your scepter. Because right. <laughs> you're running your own life. But listen, Jesus ain't going to share no throne. Right. Amen. Right. Right. Either he's on the throne of your life and he, or he's not. And when you understand that you are complete in him, he is the one who rules and, and reigns in your life. Listen, the Colossians needed to grasp three things. When we look at these verses, 
We need to understand that as believers, we are complete at conversion. It is not by works, not by faith alone that sinners are saved. It is by grace. grace. Listen, you are complete at salvation. When, when Christ came to you and you converted, you gave your life to Christ, he made you whole then. If you got some time after you finish eating your donuts and coffee on uh, uh, this morning in Sunday school, we'll be dealing with the fact about sanctification, amen? And we learned that in sanctification it takes two places. You, when you are saved, God has made you holy. He has made you righteous. He has given you a place in heaven. And now we got to learn just to walk it out. Right. Now we have to learn how to live it out, amen? You are complete at conversion. You have everything you need for righteousness and right living. Listen, as believers, we are complete only in Christ. Spirituality has a location, and it is in Christ. You're not complete in anything other than in Christ. And all believers are complete. I love the Bible. There is, there is when you come to Christ, there is no caste system. There is no VIP. Amen. Uh, uh, some, some churches may have VIP. Amen. But, but when you get to heaven, there's no VIP. You're going to see folks who was broken than you. Amen. You're going to see people who are more broken than you. All people come at the same level when we come to Christ. Everybody comes to Jesus the same way. Rich, pauper, broken, healed, whatever it is, we all come to Christ the same way. And when you get saved, we're all complete. I'm complete. Taylor, you complete. You're complete. Devin, Dennis, you're complete. We're all complete. And we are all come the same way in Christ. There is no caste system in Christ. The word of God warns us about being uh, uh, playing favorites. Amen. God tells us that we all have to come the same way. God completed believers through the ministry of the Holy Spirit who applied the positional benefits of Christ's redemptive work to all of us. Amen. Listen, Paul challenges the Colossians to believe that they are complete in Christ and to reject anything less than this. For Christ is the head of all principality and power. See, two of the four classes of angels are given here, these uh, principalities and powers. Amen? See, see, these celestial beings represented fallen spirits that needed to be disarmed. See, the false teachers asserted that God's rule over the church was by angels. See, the cross, however, has brought victory and the end to their power. See, when Satan fell, he fell with a team. See, many people uh, 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 forget that the Bible says and tells us that Satan was beautiful. He was, he was an angel, amen, and he has fallen. So those, listen, the, the, when we talk about this and we looked at it in Ephesians where it talks about our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, the powers, those spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly realm, amen. You got a battle. Your battle is not against your brother or your sister. It's those principalities and rulers. But understand this, it's saying that Jesus defeated them. Amen. Jesus defeated them. And because Jesus has defeated them, he has given us victory. See, just like the Colossians church was complete in Christ, we are complete because of Christ. As I push to a close, I just want to share four things that show us why we are complete. See, see, Paul wants us to know it's, it's one thing to know that you are complete. But what does that mean? Amen. Well, what does that mean? And many times in church, we, we say all these things. We got all the nice Christian sayings and, and, you know, I'm blessed and highly favored. All these things. I'm washed in the blood. We got all these sayings. But what, what does that mean? Amen. <laughs> what, what, what do you, you encounter the serial killer? He poured blood on you? What, what does that mean? I'm washed in the blood. Well, all these things. So what does it mean to be complete in Christ? Well, he tells us right in the scripture. There's four things. The first thing we learn here in the scripture is that the circumcision of our hearts is in Christ. Don't let that, 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 that word mess with you. Verse 11 tells us this. When you came to Christ, you were circumcised, but not by a physical procedure. Christ performed a spiritual circumcision, the cutting away of your sinful nature. 
Listen, in, in the Old Testament, circumcision happened to the males on the eighth day of, of the Jews. Jews. Jewish males on the eighth day were circumcised. That was to mark them out physically as, re, uh, as belonging to God. See, the Jews took that mark and elevated it to a status where they would begin to brag about the fact that we are of the circumcised. So any Gentile, amen, was looked down upon because you're not the circumcised. Well, what happened with Jesus is he is the great equalizer. Right. So when he came, amen, he told them, and we learned this also in Romans, is that, that listen, it's not about the physical circumcision. Right. Because I've come to circumcise your, your heart, amen? And when he circumcises your heart, that marks you out as belonging to him, amen? amen. See, the false teachers wanted to elevate the physical, but God was telling them, listen, I have marked them out. When we talk about this circumcision of, of the heart is essential yes. to the believer, yes. amen? Um, many folk, uh, we spent like three years studying Revelation. And many people get, get nervous. Four years, I'm sorry. People get nervous. I'm going to get the mark of the beast. And how do I know this? And how do I know that? Listen, if you circumcise in the heart, you already marked out. That's right. Amen. You don't have to worry. You want to learn. You want to grow. But you don't have to worry. See, because the people are like, oh, how you know if you got the mark? Well, I got the mark of Jesus because he circumcised my heart. Well, how do you know if you if you going with him when he come? Because when I got saved, he marked me out and it belongs to him. Well, I don't see no mark. You ain't got to as long as he do. Right, right. <laughs> Amen. As long as he does. Amen. Listen, the false teacher said that converts must be circumcised as it was essential to their salvation. But Paul taught that believers need to be circumcised in the heart, amen, because we are complete in Christ yes. as he fulfilled all the Old Testament types and shadows, making Judaism obsolete. The circumcision Paul speaks of is spiritual, amen. It represented a regeneration for us in effect. People of God, we are changed from the inside out. We have a circumcision not made with hands, amen. He listen, he strips away the power of the fallen sinful nature and has promised and promised us with God that, that God would guide us and direct us. Listen, it is through circumcision that the circumcision of the heart that God cut away our sinful nature and gave us a new life in him. So listen, we know that we are complete in Christ because he has circumcised our heart. He has given us a new heart, a new life in Christ. Not only that, we, we know that we are complete in Christ because our baptism is into a new life in Christ. Verse 12 says this, For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with him you were raised to new life because you trusted in the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. Now listen, bear with him in baptism. Baptism is one of the two major ordinances of the church. Y'all get that, uh, deacons in training? Amen. Two major ordinances of the church, the Lord's Supper and baptism. Amen. And these things are expected. Baptism is expected to follow conversion as soon as possible. Listen, we are baptized out of obedience to God. Amen. It is an outward expression of the grace that, that God has given us at salvation. Amen. We do it. It is an illustration of our resurrected life with Christ. We go down, amen, the old man, but come up the new man. Listen, Paul is not talking about the water right now, amen. He is talking about the fact that our old life was buried in Christ. When, we, when Christ died and we gave our lives to Christ, our old life died in him, amen. But, but this is a problem. This is for free. Some of us are starting to resurrect the old life, amen. The, the old life we use is talks about remember how we used to be remember how my, how we used to hang no no you are buried that old life is buried and you are brought up new all of us are new in Christ those who accepted him as lord and savior right. see again baptism is an outward sign right. when someone dies the next step is burial and similarly baptism is the next step an essential step for converts. The New Testament knows nothing about Christianity without baptism. Wow. Listen, just as it knows nothing about Christianity without circumcision of the heart. 
See, we, we know that we are complete in Christ because we've been buried in him and brought to a new life in him. It is in Christ, in Christ alone. There is no one else that can resurrect your life but Christ. Amen? Not only that, we know we are complete in Christ because our reconciliation is in Christ. Amen? We are reconciled. And verse 13 says this, you were dead because of your sins. And because of your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ for he forgave all our sins. See, having, having forgiven you of all trespasses, he tells us without Christ's death and the work of regeneration, the hearts of men and women are spiritually dead in their trespasses. I, I, I love my, my boy, Reverend Patrick Christian, preaches this sermon, and, and I think I've referenced it before. He says when, when you are looking at somebody that it does not have a relationship with Christ, you see dead people. Amen. They may have physical breath in their body. Amen. They may look alive, but without Christ, we are already spiritually dead. The only way to be made alive is to come into a relationship with Christ. Amen. He is the one who regenerates us. The cross is God's solution to man's alienation and depravity. We talked about this. Amen. At Calvary, Jesus Christ purchased forgiveness with his blood. For all trespasses and sins, now through him there are is found reconciliation that brings peace with God. It was at Calvary's cross that Jesus brought us back into right relationship with him. See, our, our sins, our, 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 the fact that we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity, we were separated from God. And it was through Christ that he reconciled us back to God. Remember, we talked about the fact that there was no peace between us and God. Right. But it was in Christ that we have now reestablished our peace with the Father. Yeah, yeah. See, we find reconciliation in Christ. We're complete with him because we are reconciled in Christ. Yeah. Not only that, our righteousness. We are complete because our righteousness is in Christ. Verse 14 says this. He canceled. Oh, man. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. I don't know about you, but I sure would welcome that all my debts be canceled. <laughs> I sure would welcome uh, that, that all my debts would be marked paid in full. Amen. Listen, when we look at this, this fourth reason is why believers are complete in Christ is because Christ's righteousness is imputed to them. The righteousness of Christ is their covering. I love this word, and, and we've been studying this word in our Tuesday night Bible study class, and it's in the Bible, imputed. is in the Bible. It, it means that, that, that Christ's righteousness has been deposited to our accounts. Listen, we came to Christ bankrupt. Amen. We already came owing a sin debt. Amen. But it was Christ's holiness, his righteousness was credited to our account. It's like going home, opening up your, 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 your bank app and looking in your account. You know that you only had some pennies in there. Amen. But, but you, you got so much money you can't even count. See, the Christ came in, and when he died on the cross, he gave you his righteousness. Now, understand this, and I'm going to share this again. It's his righteousness. See, because as long as we in this flesh, we, we can't muster up no righteousness on our own. We have his righteousness deposited to our account. Uh, uh, listen, if you ever got uh, uh, some money from from, you know, your parents or whatever, and sometimes they, they borrow, you borrow cash and they say, I'm going to put some money in your account, baby, but recognize I'm putting some money in your account, but that, that's still my money you owe me. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Amen? Listen, I, I'm going to be transparent. I remember when uh, uh, I bought, uh, we bought our house in, in Eastvale. And so, you know, I, my other house was, was in, in escrow and we were getting ready to buy and, and you know, the market was hot. And the, uh, and, and the seller was like, listen, dude, I, I need a $5,000 deposit. I'm like, $5,000 deposit? Yeah, I need it like 
If you want it, I got a list of people who want to buy it. I ain't, I ain't giving nothing up. 5,000 deposit. You remember them good old days when we had money. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and so I know he's going to get mad about this, but I'm going to share this. a point to this. Deacon McCoy wrote me a check for five grand. And he reminded me, that's my money. <laughs> I need it. I need it back. You, you can park that in your account. But remember, that's my money. At no time was it ever my money. <laughs> Amen. And listen, when we come to Christ, Christ deposits that money into our account. He gives us his righteousness so that we'll have everything we need to close escrow. It is his righteousness. Amen. Listen, verses 14 and 15, we have Christ's work on the cross described in a technical detail. It is not simply the message that God loves you and Christ died for you, amen, but it's a deeper relationship, a deeper uh, revelation. He, he, listen, these verses give us a behind-the-scenes look at the process Christ undertook to save us. Listen, when we look at this, this debt that we owe, amen, it is like a requirement. It is like a certificate of debt, an invoice or a document telling us we owe something to God. See, the law condemned us for our failure. But when Jesus died, took the certificate with him so that he could write across it with his own blood, canceled, debt paid, amen, it is by his death on the cross that our sin debt is paid in full, period. He canceled the debt. See, this is the serious part. It is scary to think that if you don't have a relationship with Christ, you still on the books. If you don't have a relationship with Christ, you got to pay that debt on your own. Amen. And, and listen, that payment has to be made. God is a righteous God, a just God, amen, and sin demands that payment be paid, amen, and, and without Christ, you own your own, amen, you ain't no village to go to, you got to go, you, you own your own, amen, the Bible tells us that he nailed our debts to the cross, the legal case against us is done with, amen, the creditor can't pursue us because God has nailed it to the cross in his son, Jesus. Verse 15 says, with that, he disarmed the principalities and powers. See, Satan and his forces were de dealt a powerful blow of defeat on Calvary. See, see, they thought we talked about this on, on Easter when, when it was Friday, they thought they had won. They, they see him on the cross, but they don't understand that was his, his entry into victory. It says that he, he took victory and he made a public spectacle of them. Listen, when Roman, Romans would come and they would conquer a, a, a city or, or conquer a people, their conquering general, generals would take their captives and they would give the general a parade. And he would walk through the city with those captives, letting them know that we have victory. Amen? Listen, when, when Jesus took the cross, he took the enemies and publicly showed that they were defeated. Amen? So when we talk about and we come against the enemy, we got to remember, he is a defeated foe. He has made a public spectacle of them. Amen? And when we are as his believers, because we are complete in him, we have to understand we have victory in him. When we look at this, we have to understand that we are complete in Christ. All that we are. All that we need is in Christ. We have all we need in Christ because he's marked us out as he is. He circumcised our hearts. Well, listen, we have all we need because we've been baptized into a new life. Amen. It's wonderful to be able to say that old life is behind me. Amen. Don't, listen, don't, don't, don't get caught up in what I used to be. I'm new in Christ. Amen. And then not only that, we've been reconciled with him. He's restored our broken relationship with Christ. And listen, he has nailed our sins to the cross, making and giving us a right, right standing with God. All we need is in Christ. 
So listen, this week, as you reflect on what God has done, that you are complete in Christ, don't ever let anyone tell you that Christ has not given you everything you need. Don't let anyone tell you that you are inadequate in Christ. Christ has given you everything thing you need the problem is some of us we don't understand that we don't walk in that we don't live it you want to understand everything that God has for you get in his word amen he, he'll let you know everything he has for you is in his word so listen we need to reflect on a regular basis the central truth that we keep Jesus central in our lives he has to be the center Jesus is fully God nothing needs to be added to him you have everything you need in Christ already. You have the fullness of him. Nothing needs to be added to you. There's nothing man can offer you that can make you better in Jesus. God has everything that you need. Understand that you are complete in Christ. If Christ is the center of your life, if you've accepted him as Lord and Savior, you are complete in him. Now we have to walk out the fact that we are complete. Amen? Amen. Amen. Give God a hand of praise. <laughs> <laughs>